illustrator, you know, whatever you want. So that's always a that's always a nice thing too. So that, and then we're gonna do a Tex-Mex salad because of course when you have enchiladas, you need to have something that's like Tex-Mex with it. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to get started with the black bean enchiladas because I want to get them in the oven. Um, so we're going to do the uh, two cups of butternut squash. So I already have it cubed and it's ready to go because I want to make sure it was steamed. Which I'll show you really quick. So I just, all I did was just, you know, cube it up and then I steamed it. So it's just like, you know, nice little bite-sized cubes. You can do it as small or as big as you want. I wouldn't do it really big just because, you know, when you're biting into it, you want to have all the black beans and everything else kind of mixed together. So I'm going to put this back and I'm going to show you a little bit about butternut squash. So butternut squash, of course, this was a small one. So it was probably just about this much more of the bulb and then they had about, about that much of a long neck. So when you get the smaller ones, you can get about almost about three cups out of them. So when you're doing this recipe, go for your small butternut squash because otherwise you'll have a lot left over. So of course what I do is when it's here, I always cut off the neck and then I cut off like half the bulb. And then that way it's a little bit easier to handle because when you're, you know, you're trying to do things, it's better to have something that's like on a flat surface versus like this when you're trying to roll it around and you've got knives and things, you can end up cutting yourself or cutting some fingers and stuff pretty easy. So like this one, nice, just sits right there. So when you get it, of course, when you use the neck part, there's not all these seeds and, and all this kind of pulp thing. So when you get the bottom and you get the big bulb part, then of course you got the seed. So all you're gonna do is just go in there with a spoon or a knife and you just kind of, just like, you know, pumpkins and other squash, you just kind of peel it out. Sometimes you do that with watermelon, whatever you need to do. Um, I have seen some people that have taken the, um, the actual seeds out of these and actually baked them. So you could put some, uh, like a chili powder or some cumin on them and then put them in the oven and bake them and then eat them. So you do that too. I just scrape it out and it's like you'll find that it, it can get in there so sometimes you have to get your hands in there and get a little gooey and then if you just run once you get the the big part of it i'll just run your spoon around the edges and it'll take it kind of takes that little bit of that stringy stuff out because that's not the best when you put it in the oven or you you're actually steaming it you don't want that that stringy stuff okay so that's pretty good hands all right, so you got that there. And I just usually do that right over the trash. And then of course, you know, when you, you wanna do slices that are easy to handle, so you just get your knife in there, do a nice little circle like this. And then you can either use like a, a potato peeler if you wanna do that. Um, sometimes it, you know, potato peelers will grab it like that and it'll do pretty good. A lot of times I just get like a paring knife and I just get right in there like that. Be careful. And then you just peel it off. So you just wanna make sure, you know, you're pretty much peeling all the, the peeling off if you bake it ahead of time it's actually really easy so you would if you're going to bake it you know put it on parchment paper put it in a, like a baking a baking sheet or a baking dish and then put you know make sure you put vegetable broth or water and then bake it and then it's really really easy to pull the, the skin off too so you can do it that way too but that's if you do it in these nice little pieces like this pretty easy get it all peeled off and then of course you've got this and you just chop it up and it's ready to go. But I wanted to show you, because a lot of times people will ask about butternut squash, like how do you, you know, not have it where you've got it on a cutting board and it's rolling all over the place and you have to worry about getting cut or any of those kind of things. So do it in chunks, just like that. So I'll put that there. I'll freeze the rest. because I have a little bit of leftover, so I'll freeze it. And then when I get ready to do butternut squash enchiladas again, I'll use it again. So I'll just put that over there. It is messy. You can see my cutting board and everything else all messy, but it's good, well worth it. All right, so if we're going along, we've got the butternut squash that's already in the pan, it's already been steamed. I just actually had it for about 30 minutes on kind of like a low to low medium heat. And then I just let it sit there and just kind of bubble a little bit and it got really nice and, and soft. So it's all ready to go. All right, and then we've got, so I'm gonna put that in there. So I'm gonna put the butternut squash here in the dish pan. And you can tell I'm, I'm used to uh, doing lots of things and working with things that are hot because something like this, Jerry would be like, ooh, way too hot. I think my fingers are all kind of uh, hardened up. Just put that off to the side so you can see the sauce. All right, so got this going. Put that on low, medium heat. Start up with an induction burner. And you'll see that the pieces, like I always just kind of taste it you know, a little bit. 
you just want them really soft. You don't want it mushy, but soft enough that when you mix it in with everything, that it gives you a really nice flavor. And, and it's not like it's chewy and it's not too soft or it's just mush. All right, so you got that in there. So if you're following along with the recipe, you've got add the black beans. If you don't like black beans, because I know some people don't prefer them, I used to not like them. I always preferred pinto beans, but then I got really used to black beans on a couple things, and now I prefer black beans because they, they're not as mushy. But you could do pinto beans. You could do, you know, you could do like a kidney bean. I would mash up some of the kidney beans if you did that. Or you could do like a cannellini white bean. So you could, you know, mix it all up and do different things. All right, so that's in there. And we've got, and I've got salsa. So regular salsa, you know, whatever's your favorite, you know, always look for things that of course are no oil, no, you know, and if you want like low salt, low sugar, those are always good. But that's gonna give you a really nice flavor and it's gonna get your butternut squash to start developing some of those, those uh, Mexican flavors, which is really good. Just put that in there, mix it up really well. And you can already tell, I'll pull this off. You can already tell that it's already starting to get a really nice, pretty, pretty looking feel. And the good thing about it is your butternut squash is gonna pick up that salsa flavor. So this is where if you wanted to add some heat, you could do some jalapenos, you could do that. So I've got in my salad, I'm actually gonna add just a little bit of jalapenos because that's, you know, that's really easy to get a hold of in the summer and they're very inexpensive. So you could do any type of pepper you want, poplano, et cetera, hatch green chili would be really good. So hatch right now is, I think it's August time frame here. So wait on that one. All right, so that's gonna go. Now I'm gonna get the sauce going. This is the enchilada sauce, so I'll start out. So I noticed that there's, and when you look at the recipe, there is a mistake, um, a typing error. So it says oil. Of course, we don't use any oil. We only use vegetable broth, stock, water, or white wine. So you're using, you're using your vegetable broth. So just a little bit to get it started. And so once, so I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna get this warmed up a little bit. And then I'm gonna show you a trick because one of the things that we're gonna add in there is the, so it's your seeing on there, the quinoa flour or some type of grain-based flour. So it could be garbanzo bean flour, anything like that. You wanna be careful that when you're whisking it up, especially if it's warm, that you've got everything mixed up really well. So otherwise you get clumps. And I don't know if you guys ever remember, like when, like maybe sometimes mom was making gravies and it would be lumpy. The reason why is because your cornstarch or your flour and stuff didn't get mixed in well enough. And then it just leaves these clumps of like uncooked flour, which is not a good thing at all. And the nice thing too about this, because like, you know, since I had the butternut squash already warm, it doesn't take very long and stuff to heat up the, the black beans and the, and the salsa. So it's, it's pretty well close to being ready. If you want it at this point, like I said, you could add peppers. You could also add, like if you want to add some zucchini, because it's, you know, zucchini is very plentiful right now, or you want to add like maybe some cabbages or just any type of different flavors, this is where you would add it. Also, cilantro, if you're a big, big fan of cilantro, I'm not at all. I think I've got that gene of, tastes like so. Um, you could add cilantro in here. So there's, I'll think about all the different Mexican flavors that you really like, and that's where you want to definitely put it in inside of this to give you those great butternut squash type of enchiladas. Okay, so we've got this in here. Um, make sure we got that. So it looks like broth's not gonna take very long to heat up. All right, well. So a good way to do this, if you've got just a little bit of broth, like what I have here, what you can do is you can add, you can start adding your flour, but you wanna make sure you have a good whisk right next to you. So usually not the best things like a, like a fork or something like that would be the next, but um, spoons and stuff, you'll still get that lumpiness. Um, the other thing that you can do if you've got a whole bunch of vegetable broth and you're getting ready to add cornstarch or flour to it, you can actually pour some of the broth off into another, like a little um, a dish, and then just slowly add your flour and then temper it and add it back in. So since I don't have a lot, I'm going to actually just get my elbow grease going because my it's not boiling, so it's just enough to add it, but not enough and stuff where it's going to clump. Get that whisk going, or your fork, or whatever you got going, or blender. And the reason why you're adding the flour, and if you didn't want to do flour, you could add cornstarch, arrowroot, um, tapioca, um, those type of things, is because you want that as the thickener. Okay, I'm gonna pull that off the side, and if I need to add more, I can. 
So it just looks like, kind of almost looks like a milk product right now. So not much in there, but you can see there's no clumps, which is really good. If you start, when you start adding everything else, just get your whisk and just, you know, just keep mixing it up. And that way, like I said, you don't get those clumps because there's nothing worse than having sauce and you bite into something with like a big chunk of flour or tech or a cornstarch or something like that. Yeah. Okay, so we got this going. And then, so we've got, so we're gonna put it back on warm. So I got the flour in there. I'm gonna add the spices. So we got lots of spices in this. So we've got, if you look at the recipe, we've got chili powder, so one and a half tablespoons. We've got cumin, smoked paprika, garlic, and onion powder, and then of course, um, sea salt and black pepper, if you're adding that. Um, so the nice thing about it is what I always talk about, even with my recipes, you know, everybody's different, you know, flavor profiles with spices. So go, like if I say like, um, I want to have tablespoons of chili powder, go like maybe start out with like a half a tablespoon or a half a teaspoon and then and then kind of keep adding your spices to it. The nice thing about it is, I'm not burning. Um, the nice thing about it is when you do that, then um, you can get you, you can develop your flavor, your flavor profile. And so what you're doing then is you're, you're kind of like saying, okay, I don't like as much of the cumin and I don't like as much as, of something else. And so you just want to make sure that you add the spices because you can always add more, but you can't take out. And I've seen so many times like on Facebook and things like that, people talk about that um, they tried a recipe and they threw it away. And the last thing I want you to do is throw away a whole bunch of enchiladas because the cumin's too much or the, or the chili powder. So always just make sure you, you test the spices out and add more as you need them. All right, so I'm gonna add the spices in. So I'm just gonna mix it in. Get going with your whisk. It smells so good. It's got that cumin and chili powder and garlic powder and all those flavors. Okay, so it looks, it's really dark right now, but I don't have anything else in it, just the spices and the flour and of course the vegetable broth. But it smells like you're going to a Mexican restaurant and you have all the enchiladas and things like that. That's no going. Okay, so you got that in there. And then I've got the tomato sauce, so just regular tomato sauce. I always, since it was like about a half a can, I actually just put the rest of it in a freezer bag and put it in the freezer. So that way when I get ready to make like some marinara sauce, I can just pull it right out of the freezer and add it in there. So that's my tomato sauce. And then I've got two cups of vegetable broth. So I'm gonna mm -hmm. put this over here. I'm gonna switch. You guys can watch. I'm not going to have my back to you. So even though I'm adding in the vegetable broth, the nice thing about it is, you know, add a little bit just like this and then just kind of stir. So just kind of keep it going and it just mixes up everything a little bit better. Okay, there's one. This is a really good enchilada sauce too. So if you, if you like it, once you, you know what, her poop needs to be cleaned out too. No, I thought you were going to. No, I don't understand why you're so grouchy. <laughs> you're going to mute you for a second, Sherry. Okay, so I'm going to stir that up. Once it starts heating up because of the flour that's in there, then what you, the, of course it's gonna thicken up a little bit. But you know, making sure it's on low when you're doing the, the enchilada sauce, because the last thing you wanna do is for it to heat really quick and then it comes really thick. So you don't want it real, real thick. And the reason why is because you wanna be able to pour it over your enchiladas. Like I said, if you really like the, the, really like the sauce, then make a couple, like a couple, you know, like a double batch, triple batch, which is always really good too. So I'll watch that. So it's on a medium low, get everything out of the way. All right, and let that heat for a little bit. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get started on the dressing. So we'll just have that ready. So we've got just a regular, you know, food processor or blender, it doesn't matter. Um, you could also do it if you wanted to, you could do it by hand. Cause it's not, it's not too hard, especially if you have a really ripe um, avocado, which are really good right now. So we've got half of a large avocado. 
these are more medium size. The big ones and stuff are really soft in the store, which is not good. That's the one thing I don't like is to have to have mushy avocado or you open it up and it's not real green. And it's got like lots of black spots. So, so I went with a little bit of the smaller ones today. So that's beautiful. That's the nice green, the prettiness and stuff that you're looking for. And you can always do, you know, you can do the, let's see if it does, yep. Do it like that. It also can be dangerous. So one thing I always write, usually what I do is I just take my fingernail and flip it off, like that. Okay, so there's that. Just watch, make sure your, your sauce doesn't get too, too much. All right, so we're gonna use, we'll use the big part here. So actually I'll just take a spoon and I'm just gonna go around the edge. And then I'm gonna do a couple chops in it. Just easier when it's in a food processor blender to have little pieces versus one great big chunk because otherwise sometimes your blender or your food processor will go across the, uh, the cabinet when that happens. Messy today. Put that there for a little bit later. I'm going to show you also. So when you're doing something like, so when you've got like only a half avocado that you're going to use, um, as long as you leave the pit in, so if I didn't take the pit out and it was still like this, you have these little olive savers, ABO, um, just avocado, like half raw avocado. And if, as long as you put the pit in there, in that middle, and then you do the nice little uh, band wrap on it, this will actually keep your avocado and stuff. It'll still get a little bit of brown around the edges, but this will keep your avocado good for quite a while, which is really nice. So, but I'm going to be using it. I'll just leave that there. And those are on Amazon for like, under ten dollars for two. I use them all the time. We use them all the time. That way you don't feel like you have to eat the whole avocado right away. This is coming out nice. Put it back on low. I'll show you that when we get ready. All right. So then we've got we've got water. So I'm gonna move this over. All my salad items. So we've got the water, which is here. We also got lime juice. So I put the lime juice in. If you don't have lime juice, you can always use lemon too. You're really wanting a lot of times is what you're really wanting is you're wanting the citrus. The citrus is what breaks kale down, and that's nice. So so anytime that you use like a citrus or you use avocado in kale, it breaks it down and it makes it a lot more enjoyable. So it's not that that real chewy stuff that that everybody's used to. Then we got cumin, so another one of the, of course, Tex Tex spices. Throw that in there. That there. And then you can put in your sea salt and pepper. And then I've got my water. So let me go ahead and get started with this. And of course, it's always messy. So let me grab a oops, little spatula, get it mixed in. All right. I'll show you the dressing here in a second when we get ready for the salad. All right. So got that ready. So that's already. So I have in this towel a bunch of. Tortillas, corn tortillas, beautiful corn tortillas. So I'm just going to put them in the microwave for just about, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 seconds or so, just to warm them up a little bit. It helps make them a little bit more pliable. No matter what though, when you're actually making, when you're making the, the enchiladas, you know, when you build, when you're kind of like, like making the corn tortillas go around everything, they're always going to split no matter what. So that's when you're going to pour the sauce on. And make it taste good and make it pretty. And then if you put like, um, like say like a, a black olives and, and avocado and things like that and dress it up, guarantee everybody will love it. A little bit of warm. All right, so let's get the enchiladas made. Turn this off. Then I'm going to pull this over. Just 
just make sure when you mix up your banana squash with your with your black beans that you get everything mixed up really well because otherwise you'll get like a whole bunch of chunk of uh, butternut squash and then you'll get another big chunk of like black beans and it's much better when it's okay so we've got the sauce in here so i've got the sauce not really really thick because i'm going to be baking these up also so let's see let's let me show you so it's thick but it's not real thick you want it, you still want it runny because you want to be able to drizzle it all over everything there. So take the whisk out. We don't need that anymore. And I have a spoon. So I'm going to grab some enchilada sauce. It's like when you're building any type, like anything like lasagna, because I made a bunch of lasagna um, just this last weekend. Of course, Jerry ate the whole thing, which was like double the size of this, which is good. I'm glad. I want things eaten when we're making it. And then when you make anything like enchiladas or anything like that, you always want to put the sauce on the bottom, even like with a uh, lasagna. And the reason why you want to do that is things don't stick, but it also makes it really good. That, yeah, I did a, um, the lasagna this time, I put a, um, I had roasted red peppers left over and I had some artichoke hearts. And so in the ricotta, which is made like with the tofu and nutritional yeast, I actually put a half a jar of the artichoke hearts because I didn't want to go bad because when you put them in the fridge, they don't last very long. And then the roasted red peppers, I put those in there. So it was a roasted red pepper sauce in my lasagna. Oh my God, with spinach and stuff, really good. Very, very different. So I just decided, I was like, oh, I need to use this. I'll use this. I'll use this up and make sure we put everything in there. So, all right, so we've got tortillas. So I'll just kind of keep them kind of wrapped up a little bit. So you're gonna grab, start out with about a tablespoon and then just kind of play with it a little bit. You kind of want to line it like that. You don't want them doing too much because if you if you do them, and then kind of make sure you even out your butter. If you do them too much, then they tend to kind of like break apart. So you do that, you roll them, and then you put it with the rolled side, the edges and stuff down like that. Okay, so there we go, that's more. And then you kind of just work quickly and do them. This actually freezes really well too. A little bit more black beans. Roll them up, scoot it together. And a lot of times, even if I try to freeze stuff like this, it never gets to the freezer. We eat it. Ah. So about that much. So that's probably about two heaping tablespoons full. Uh, and you can tell like some of my corn tortillas are spray breaking just a little bit, but it's okay. But if you warm them, like I said, if you warm them up just a little bit, it helps. Especially if you bring them, oops, man overboard. If you ever bring them right out of the refrigerator, they will split all over the place. Much. Full. Round up. Slide together. Spread it out. <clears throat> slide together grab your next one this is fun too so like you know because you know covid you know everybody's getting back together and things this is a really fun recipe when you've got if you've got family and friends to make them together because everybody if that comes apart we'll just scoot it down a little bit um everybody loves making enchiladas yeah. and then of course you have the edges so you want to make sure you fill it all the way man overboard here a little bit more roll it oops ah, and one more so it looks like at one two three four five six seven eight nine jerry will for jerry will probably eat about five or six for dinner and then they'll be done might be just a little bit left over that there so you'll notice so you'll notice that the corn tortillas are already starting to break a little bit so that's kind of why you want to work a little fast grab your sauce and then just start spooning it over because the, the moisture will help the uh, corn tortillas and stuff stick together Make sure you get all the edges. Nice, beautiful sauce. 
all the edges. Penny. Nothing to bark at, but. And I use all the sauce because that's one of the things when I make lasagnas or I make enchiladas or something like that, I always put as much sauce as I can put on them. And the reason why it just makes them even better. And we like them, you know, you like, especially when you get like lasagna, you want it really moist. And so the same thing with enchiladas, you can put all the different sauce on there and get everything all nice and moist. It's a good thing. All right, so I'm down here, I'll just pour the rest. All right. So if I taste it, the enchilada sauce has a little bit, it's just a little bit of heat. That's because of the chili powder. So it depends on what kind of chili powder you get. But if you go on a really mild chili powder, then don't, don't worry about it and stuff. It would be just a very mild. And then you've got the cumin and the garlic powder and a little bit of smoked paprika, but really good. But you could spice it up and put all kinds of peppers in it and all kinds of different things. So before I actually bake it, um, the one of the things that I'm going to add is I'm going to add just some, some red onions. Because it's nice to have a little bit of red onions and stuff with it. But you want to make sure that, you know, if you, unless you really like the raw ones, which I do, um, it's kind of nice to have them where they're, where they're baked a little bit. Add that. And if you don't have red onions, white onions, anything else like that. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of scallions because I'm going to put the, uh, the freshness when it comes out. I'm going to add the, the scallions on top too, which will be really pretty. But it, it just adds a nice flavor. You could also add corn if you wanted to do that, which would be really good. So that would be another thing that you could add. And then a little bit of the black olives. I'm going to leave some also for when I've got, when I'm getting ready to decorate it. Oops, man overboard. And just space them out a little bit. And it's nice too, because now the black olives, I don't know if you guys have seen those in the store and stuff, but they're doing the low sodium ones. And so when you get the black olives, you don't feel like you're getting all this sodium and stuff. And they're actually really good. I buy them, I buy them all the time and stuff for home now. A couple more over here, and even them out a little bit. All right, so that is ready to go. All right, let me grab, I'm gonna grab some parchment paper. I forgot to grab that. So one of the things, you know, you can put aluminum foil on things, but I always put parchment paper first. Um, and I just stepped on the black olive. <laughs> so I always put the parchment paper. And the reason why I do that is then you don't have the aluminum that's, that's touching your food. So it's always nice to do something like that. I even do it with the baked potatoes. When I do um, bake up a bunch of potatoes and I have these little nice little sheets like this, I will always put parchment paper and then roll the uh, potato up in it just so you don't have all the, the extra aluminum and things that nobody really wants these days. So I'm just putting on lightly like that. And then I'm gonna throw it in the oven. Penny's gonna find the olive here in a minute, but I don't think she's gonna like it. All right, so I've got it in the oven. I'm gonna actually pick up that so I don't slide all over the place. So um, I had just a little bit more of the, of the filling left. So there's probably like maybe a tablespoon left. So when we get ready to eat and stuff, I'll just add that to the side of the plate. And what I could have done too is actually made a couple of the um, enchilada and stuff, the corn tortillas and stuff a little bit fuller. So it looks like I have one left, which I'll put back in the fridge, which will be good. Put that there. All right, so there's my decorations. I'm also gonna put fresh avocado on it. So I'm gonna, I got little slices and stuff that I'm gonna put in there, which is really good. So we'll definitely make sure that uh, we add that. All right, kale. Hopefully all you guys eat kale. Kale used to be, of course, one of those things. I remember growing up that um, it was always the things that decorated, like these pieces like this were always the things that decorated the uh, salad bars and all the different food and stuff. And everybody was like, oh, just, you know, it's just a decoration. And now it's probably one of the most popular items that are out there. So it's really good, and especially like in the summer, if you ever grow it and stuff, you'll get, you'll, and maybe like we were talking, like Sherry and I were talking about the thistle weeds. I mean, you'll get, it gets huge and there's nothing better than fresh kale. I like, this one's curly. I do, per, I do prefer, my favorite is the La Quinta, which is the elephant ears. 
So it's the long pieces like this and it's more flat and it's darker. That tends to be a little less chewy than your curly, but sometimes that's really hard, especially with COVID and stuff, it's hard to find. So this is definitely the curly kale that's uh, very abundant in stores. What I do too, is if I get too much kale, like if the bundle's really big, um, and I'll show you here, strip this one down, but what if I get too much, I just put it in a freezer bag and just put it in the freezer. And then when I'm getting ready to make like soups or you know anything like that, that you'd wanna put kale in, I actually will take like the top of the baggie and I'll just crunch it up. And then it becomes, it'll become like little tiny pieces, almost like parsley. But that's a good way that if you've got individuals and stuff, they're like, mm, I don't like kale or I don't like, you know, I don't like greens and stuff. You could actually mix it that way and put the kale and get all those nutrients, nutrients in there without necessarily having big chunks of kale that everybody can eat. So that's how I used to play when I used to cook for Jerry's mom. And she's always like, I don't like kale. I don't like onions. I don't like this and like that. I would mix things up. So I would make like a soup. And I would take, um, you know, like the, make the hand mixtures and I would actually put that in there and I would um, mix up the onions. And so you get the onion flavor and stuff that wouldn't know that they were in there because everything was out in there. But that, and I put in the kale that was all shredded up and she thought it was parsley. But that's how we got the nutrients, you know, without saying, yes, you do like it. Yes, you do. Because it was like, no, I don't like that. All right. So kale, you get, you know, these big pieces like this. You're always going to have the stalk. And so like this one got broke off a little bit, but what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to pull the pieces off. But when you get a big piece of stock like this, you just grab it and pull it the other way like that. And then you got the stock. So you can eat this, it's perfectly healthy. Um, I've seen some people and I've done this too. And so I've actually um, dehydrated these and then you grind them up and you have basically a kale powder, which is really good. You can put it in all kinds of smoothies and, and those type of things. So you could use, you know, use the whole entire piece or you can throw them away if you don't want, but don't worry about that. So I've got the pieces here. All right, so what I do too, is you've got all these big pieces to, to how do you cut kale. So I grab this and I actually, just like what I do, if you've seen some of my basil, the ship and I cut, I just take it and I roll like big pieces around the small pieces. So it's kind of like a, like a little roll like that. And then, I have sauce on my knife. I just grab my knife and then you're just doing a just a nice little chiffon odd cut like that. Watch your fingers. And then when you've got that, because there's some big pieces, then I usually go through and I'll just do sideways cuts like that. And so then you get these really nice pieces of kale. And it's not like these big chunks. Have you, I know, because I know you guys have all like gone to salad bars or you've had salads and the pieces are like, you know, like this long and stuff. And it's like, well, that's a little hard to eat. And then you got the dressing on it and it kind of slops all over. So. It's really nice. Sometimes if I have a lot of time, I will take um, kale like this and stuff and I will cut like little tiny, almost like a, it's called chiffonade, just little tiny pieces. And then you got almost like these ribbons of kale, which is really nice. And it breaks down really, really nice. So that's kale. So like this salad, this was one, this was like a small bunch. It was only about this big, but look at that, it's huge. It looks like it's huge. So if it looks like it's too much, and it's just you take half of it, freeze it, and then use it for your soups and things. But the cool thing about kale is once you start mixing it, you start adding like either avocados, so like avocado and little salt and pepper is really good or citrus, it breaks down. So it'll be half the size and stuff when we break it down. So this is all ready to go. We've got the dressing. We'll just do a check the dressing really quick. Spin. Okay, so the kale's in here. Then you're gonna add, of course, you've got black beans. Don't like black beans, don't put them in, put cannellini white beans, you know, whatever's your favorite. And just make sure, like this one, I see a little bit of moisture and stuff. So I'm gonna grab a spoon so I don't get all the moisture of the black beans. So those go in. And you have a choice with this, it's completely up to you. So when you're making this, you can say, all right, I'm going to massage the kale down before I add everything else, or you can actually add everything else and then massage it down so everything gets all mixed together. But it is, it's, it's really just a, a preference of, of what you like or don't like. I like to get my hands in there and kind of get everything together, break down the tomatoes a little bit so I don't have like chunks of things. Okay, so you have black beans, you have <clears> corn. <throat> you definitely use corn in the cob. You could actually roast this, which would be a completely different flavor, which would be really good but this was just the regular freezer corn. Yeah, because right now, like corn on the cob's good, 
but not necessarily can you find it in stores, like at least in our stores for that. All right, then we've got red bell peppers. You could also, this is fresh, you could also use the roasted red bell peppers. All right, so before I even do anything, isn't that pretty? It's already got the black, it's got the yellow and the red. Yummy. All right. And then we're going to do the avocado, but I'm going to actually put that more towards the end, but you don't have to add the avocado if you don't want to, because I'd like to have like a little bit of chunks in there and I'll mix it towards the end. And then we've got tomato. So instead of using a large tomato, which Roma usually holds up better, I had these little like grape tomatoes. So I was like, I'm going to use those because those are pretty. Throw those in. Then you've got red onion. So another one, uh, red onions kind of like spices. Um, you know, you might get some red onion stuff that's that's okay and it's like it's very mild, and then you'll get some red onion that will knock you on your keister. So I always recommend that if I say, even if I said like a half a cup or a quarter cup, start out with a little bit smaller, you know, depending on what the what the kind of the flavor profile of your of red onion is, or if you use a white onion, still same thing, and then just kind of add. So you may not want all that red onion. But you could also change this up too. Do caramelized onions, which would be really good. So that would change your flavor profile. So look at already, just not even mixed up. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Jerry and I love salads. We'll eat tons. I mean, we probably pretty much every night eat some type of a salad. You know, and it may be one of those ones that you know I have extra corn on the cob, so I'll cut that, I'll chop that down, and I'll put it in a salad. And so we we're always constantly making up different salads and and trying to do different things. And I actually made, um, I haven't eaten it yet, but, you know, because the vegetables are so fresh right now, there's cucumber, red onion, and tomatoes. And so then it's got, I've got red wine vinegar, a little bit of balsamic um, vinegar, and then a little bit of water, and it's all ready to go. So actually he can just open this up and he's gonna get these nice tomatoes that are a little bit of balsamic, and a little bit of red wine vinegar. So you could actually make something like this up, which will keep you, usually keeps about a week, week and a half, and you can put it on salads, you know, you can put it on all kinds of different things. So there's a lot of times and stuff, I'll make things like this up for, for salads and, and kind of fun things. Especially now that it's hot. I think it was like 101 yesterday or something here. Okay, so everything's in there. So they'll pull the avocado off. The other thing I'm gonna add, just a little bit of jalapeno, just a teeny bit. I took the seeds out and then I just chopped little pieces. Not too much. I only did just, this was like two little slices. That was it, just enough. All right, grab my gloves, get this out of the way. And I'm gonna pull this off because I want it to take a little bit more. All right, gloves. Thank you. This is the fun part. If you ever had a long day working, all those, somebody annoyed you, <laughs> just that type of thing. Massage and salads is really good. Okay, so you just grab your hands in there, just kind of mix it all up, you know, make sure you get all your vegetables in there. Okay, dressing. Put this over here so it doesn't drip everywhere. All right, one thing I always, I always show when you've got a food processor, you've got this little hole on here, down here at the bottom where your blade's at. If you're actually trying to, you know, dish a bunch of things out of the, out of the, um, the food processor, actually just take your finger, like your index finger, and just put it in that little hole. And the cool thing about it, the blade doesn't fall out, which is really nice. I've seen that in so many cooking shows where somebody will really quickly do something and the blade flops over and it gets into like, it's like a soup or something and it just splashes everywhere. So put your finger right there. And it holds it, holds the blade in place. Or you can take it out, but then sometimes too, if you've got a bunch of liquid in here, you don't want to do that because then it leaks all over the place. So, all right, so I've got the dressing. It's just a nice, you know, kind of an avocado dressing. If you didn't want to do this, you could do like a honey mustard, you could do a balsamic. So there's all kinds of flavors. So I'm just going to drizzle this in. This didn't make a lot of dressing, so I'm just gonna, I know it's gonna, it'll take. So a lot of times and stuff, I only do like half the dressing, but this is, like I said, it's not a lot, so I'm just gonna add it. And you could make the avocado as 
whipped up as you want and as smooth as you want or as chunky as chunky, chunky as you want. Okay, then you get in there. And you just start like grab, grab your like your kale and then just start massaging it in. The more you massage it, the better off your kale is. And if you happen to get a tomato in there, it's okay. It breaks down, which is really nice. Get in the bottom. Would be really good on, to, on this. Um, I have a, a balsamic, like it's called, people call it a craft dressing because it's so addictive. And it has like flax seeds and balsamic and stuff. And it's really, really good. Um, when you do this like avocado dressing here, then you could actually add um, some of the bal balsamic in there or even a reduced balsamic would give it a really good flavor too. Or flavored balsamics would be really good. You could do like a grapefruit, you could do a jalapeno. There's so many different balsamics out there. So you just kind of keep getting in there. Since you have the citrus and the avocado in there, you can tell I'm messy. Um, it breaks it down really quick. So like you like already, just even just massaging it for not even a minute. Look how much it's broken down. Just keep doing a little bit. And the one thing you'll notice, of course, is all the goodies go to the bottom. And the cool thing about when you massage in dressing, especially if you're doing a big salad, like just say you've got a bunch of fam, <laughs> a bunch of family, because we can kind of say that now because people are getting together and things. When you've got, you're going to put a dressing in there, especially if you're putting something like balsamic and it's very liquidy. A lot of times what you'll end up doing is like, even if you go to restaurants, you'll put that dressing on and then you'll take that, you know, the last few pieces of your salad. And of course it's like drenched in balsamic. So if you actually add the balsamic dressings in here and then massage it in, it'll stick to the lettuces and everything else a lot better. Then you don't have that big pool of dressing at the bottom, unless that's your favorite. All right. So now, Avocado. Just do little chunks. You could mix it in at the very beginning, but I like to have the fresh chunks in there versus all mixed in. And we already had the avocado in the dressing, so it's kind of nice just to do it at the very end. Just go in there, spoon. And just a little bit of the red onion left. That. Okay, and you got those little pieces, so just kind of grab them a little bit and then just mix them in. Good. So there is my massaged Tex Mex salad, which is yummy. Like I said, there's so many different dressings that you could add to it that makes it really, really good. So you could leave out the avocado, you could make it honey mustard, you could put in roasted corn, you could put in roasted red peppers. And there's all kinds of different things and stuff that you definitely could add. All right, let me get this out of the way. It is messy. The fun things about making salads like that is you've got, you know, you can get messy, which is really nice. Check. Yum. Good. All right, let me grab my bowl. Very cool. If we were home, I would clean this bowl up a little bit, but then serve the salad this way. But since we're always on camera and stuff, it's always nice to make it pretty. So just kind of grab it out into your favorite bowl. The nice thing about this salad is so col it's so colorful that you can do a pretty basic bowl. I'll show you here after I get it all in here. And it's just, it's beautiful. Put that out at a cookout or anything like that, or just for yourself. It's gonna go. It's not gonna last long. Uh -huh. And even though you know it's you know, the kale is like probably half the amount, it's still a lot of kale. So you could actually just half the recipe. You know, use all the I would use like all the red pepper and the corn and stuff because that's all the goodies and stuff. But as far as the kale, you could do it half if you wanted to. And make it as you as you want to go. All right, so we're gonna grab pork, do a little bit of. You know how it is when you're doing a salad; everything, all the goodies go to the bottom. So just, especially since you want to take a picture and make it pretty. 
and grab everything in the color up. All right. And the cool thing too, you could when you're doing this and stuff, you could always add some of your because when the filling left, you could add the butternut squash in there too, which would be really good. So there is the Tex Mex salad. Doesn't that look good? One way I forgot to tell you guys. So one way to know if you get enough dressing, of course, the thing that you're always going to want to taste is going to be your lettuce. So kale or lettuce or anything like that, because that's what's going to clean the dressing so they cling to the first thing. And so you want to taste it. So you that way, if you taste it and you're like, well, if I need a little bit more dressing, that's how you'll do that. That's good. Very refreshing. It's a very, since it's pretty much the avocado and lime juice, it's a very light dressing, but it's really nice, especially like in the summertime. You can just sit down with something like this, nice glass of sweet tea if you're if you're south or even here or iced tea and stuff, and you've got a beautiful salad ready to go. And then the good thing about kale too, the next day, and especially since you have the, the citrus in there, your avocado's gonna hold up for the next day. You could actually eat half of it one day, half of it the next day, and you could add some different type of a different dressing in it or add some more corn or something like that. All right, let me grab parchment paper out of here. Grab avocado, put my cutting board away. Okay, right. pit. Take the other pit out. So you got this, fits just like that. Even if it's small, still fits. You just put it on a, you just wrap it a little bit tighter like that, and then you put it in the fridge. There's your avocado. Good for, I, we've had it up to like a week. I think, like I said, it'll be a little bit of brown on the edges and stuff, not like the brown brown you'd see if you just left it in there. And so you just take a knife and skim it off a little bit, and then you get this great avocado that doesn't look bad. Put that in there. Okay, so then, so we can either do slices and stuff, but I'm gonna actually do chunks. So let me just get these ready. Same thing, you're just doing little hatch marks. Back and forth, almost like you're doing a what is it, tic tac toe, something like that. That okay, and then I'm gonna grab a spoon. I'm gonna grab one of my little dishes again, too. Let's grab one from below. Put your spoon in there. You don't even have to do that if you've got a really soft avocado. You can actually just squeeze it without even having to get your spoons dirty. This one's not as soft, soft as I would like. So it would not be uh, as nice as slices and things like that if I if I did it just to squeeze the squeeze technique. Okay, so just put it in there because I want to be able to decorate. So we got that. I have kale everywhere. <laughs> Miss Messy. What's the fun of cooking if you can't get messy, right? And then hopefully you have somebody else to clean it up. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yep. Okay. All right. So there's the <clears throat> salad all ready to go. Okay. So I've got my scallions. I've got my avocado. I have some more of the black olives that are fresh. And then I have a pit, which we don't need. <clears throat> right. Let me grab. I do. I have kale everywhere. So one thing too about enchiladas, you know, if you wanted extra, because the sauce is all pretty much on the bottom, but if you wanted extra sauce, do like double or triple the recipe. Um, that way you can use like the whole can of tomato sauce and, and that kind of thing, which is really good. Okay, so you add Porsche, a little bit more of your black olives, because if they kind of cook down a little bit, you want to add the freshness because it's pretty. It's all about, it's all about what I always say, eye candy. You know, when you're, when you're doing things and you have like, you know, a bunch of things that are prepped for meal prep and things like that in your refrigerator, it's all about what it looks like. And so when your eyes look at things like a salad like that, you're like, ooh, that looks good. So that's what I always do. Go for the eye candy. Okay, got scallions. I only have a few left. Let's just add them all. 
You could add some roasted red pepper on that if you wanted to. And then fresh avocado. This is also where you could add your cilantro. Like I said, I'm not a fan of cilantro, so I don't usually buy it. And if I do buy it, then I end up with a bunch of it that I throw out, which I hate to do. So I didn't buy it this time because I'm not a, a fan of it. When I did cooking classes where we all cook with me, I always used to give it. I'd be like, okay, who's taking the avocado or who's taking the cilantro home? Always had takers. Never me. All right. Clean it up a little bit. Got a little drizzle. All right, so that's a little too hot. So the nice thing about it too is you could still put a little bit of the filling on top if you wanted to decorate it that way. But it's so pretty just the way it is, especially if you put, you know, if you had the cilantro and things. But there is your enchiladas. So black bean enchiladas with butternut squash. Yum, really good. And then of course, let me get my one hand going here. And of course you get your Tex-Mex salad. So there is dinner tonight. Yum. Jerry's like, yum, yum, I'm ready. I get the one hand so I don't burn myself. But then that look good. Like I said, yes. you, want to, you want to make some more sauce, add more sauce to it, you know, really, really saucy, all those kind of things. But like I said, the butternut squash, it is because it's got that kind of like the chilies and things like that in it, is not real sweet at all. So even though you think it would be, it's not. It's and this is, you know, you've got if you did this like three and three and things, you could have like two or three nights or lunches and all ready to go. So there you go. There is everything. I hope you guys enjoy. And we'll Thanks, see you. Kelly. You're welcome. We'll see you in about 30 days. Love you guys. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.